Do you find that you have a certain few radiators, particularly on a drop down leg, that constantly get air in, or the pipe work to them gets air in them, you're always bleeding them out, you're having hassle getting them going. Every other radiator works in the house. I'm working here today in my local village institute because they have just that problem, and it's been going on for ages. So we're gonna have a look at the major physical fix that we're gonna do, that I'm gonna show you how to do right now, but also some of the other things we could tweak to the system to perhaps prevent this happening in the future. Let's get on with it. Right then, so some of you may remember a video that I put out a couple of weeks ago where we went around this plant room here and I sort of showed you what it's like for us when we walk into a plant room, how we as plumbers, as professionals, find out what is in a particular space and how that system is working and also how to clean the lens down. So one of the problems with this system is this, it's physical way that it's been installed. So we've got the plant room here this is a single story. Everything goes up into the ceiling over there and then everything runs round at high level all the way around. Radiators here, radiators here, radiators all round through the hall, all round there. This, the local village hall there. There's the cricket pitch there where I scored 118 not out last summer. Yes, yes, yes. And averaged about 40 odd with the bat, but there you go. Radiators all around here, fan core units fed, they find drop downs. Then it goes through there. We've got radiators here, through here, and then these final two radiators on the system, this one here and this one here will not come on. I'm fortunate enough to have found the actual plans to this building, so you're gonna get a lovely over the top view. We've got the boiler with the flow going all the way around on ground level, that's what the red means. In the pink, that is pipes that go up into the loft. There are spurs that lead off to multiple radiators that are in orange all around the building, as you can see there's loads of them. But the two orange ones that are now gonna turn pink, they're the ones that are not working. So we've got a problem by diving our pipework up into the loft, haven't we? And that problem is airlocks. To reiterate, the system is balanced. Every orange radiator works on the system. The pink rads don't work. The pink pipework goes up into the loft and then goes down from the loft, feeding those two radiators that we can't get going. So what that means is, is that any air that is up there, okay, needs to have an air vent or some way of being able to get itself out of the system, out of the pipes. If you have air in the pipes, you will not have a flow. It basically acts as a blockage for the water and we won't have a flow going round, okay? So what we found is every other radiator works on the system, but these two never do. So this drop down leg here, the first thing I do as a plumber when I come in, I feel some of the other radiators, they're getting hot. Then I feel these two pipes here. That is the earliest indication for me as to whether these radiators are coming on. Then I opened up, the TRV, made sure that was loose. Uh, did that on the other radiator as well. Everything was fine. These should be coming on, you know. They should be working. So look what we've got up here. We've got a loft hatch. Let's have a little look. I've been loft. I'm a leprechaun. Don't steal me pot of gold. It's just nice to have good steps at a place. <laughs> it makes me want to cry sometimes that people actually do care about us. Yes. We've got pipes that are come out, coming up. They're feeding the kitchen. These pipes run all the way along here, and guess what? They drop just there, you can't really see them very well, uh, down to our radiators. Now, when I felt these pipes a few days ago, when I came to spec this problem out and see what was going on, one was kind of lukewarm, and the other just had nothing going through it. So, my first thing that I'm gonna do to try to fix this problem is cut in two automatic air vents somewhere along these pipes here. And then don't go anywhere because after we've done that, there might be a few remedial things we can do after this to stop this problem from happening, to stop air being created. Because there are ways that air is created in a system that we can negate just by a few little tweaks here and there. So on this job, I was just gonna drain down these two legs, not the whole system. I can just drain these two legs down here and then cut the pipes up in the loft and then hope to God that <laughs> that is gonna be all okay. Don't worry, I think I know what I'm doing. So hopefully everything should be okay. I'm not even gonna vent the radiator, there's no point. We don't, we don't need to drop air out of this rad, we don't need to drop air out of that rad. All we're trying to do is drop some water out of these pipes up here and out of those horizontal pipes up in the loft so we can just cut up into them and then also get those two pipes cut and then we can get this job done. Right, so these are the air vents I'm gonna fit. Now, automatic air vents work in a very, very basic way. 
we've got a small plastic float inside here with a tiny hole at the top and if the float goes up like that it will lock off that hole and stop anything from coming out so when there's when this is full of air the float is at the bottom therefore allowing air past it and out of the hole at the top and when it fills up with water the float goes doink up to there shuts off and automatically closes the valve therefore it is an automatic air vent that's how they work it's good practice for us to install these with a little valve underneath just in case these go wrong they're a moving part they do go wrong um, so it's good to have a little valve on there so if they do go wrong we don't have to drain the system out drop the pressure out or anything like that to get it all working again all right so while that's all draining out i'm going to get each one of these prepped and ready to go on the reason we are finally doing this is because I've been called out once or twice. What I've had to do is pop a hose on and actually blast the air out a few times. And after a few goes of that, you know, it's like, right guys, I think we need to actually do some actual remedial work here. So this is all but stopped now. I just want to cut this bit now. So I've given it as, as good a chance as possible to get rid of all the water in there so we don't have a problem soldering in a minute. So there we go. I've got my first pipe cut just there. Uh, and down here, I've got an air vent i've changed the valve over so it's a red valve and it falls to the off position which people always get really excited about on the internet for some reason and we're going to pop that first one now they're actually going to disappear kind of up behind a piece of wood like that so once it's done i'm going to get a bit of biro and go air vent and write that on this so if anyone comes up here they can see those uh, if there's anyone else comes in behind me to sort that out but let's get this first one on now gotta say this is not the easiest place to do any filming but there you go so i'm just spreading the 222 mils there getting our tea in then we've got a little reducer going to 15 mil there as well now we're just going to get that soldered in now i would not recommend you solder near beams like i am here if you're not experienced at what you're doing and even if you are really experienced maybe it's a good idea to use a heat mat anyway uh, but i'm very experienced and i back myself and i'm going to sit here for a few hours afterwards anyway to make sure all is well um, also these solders aren't going to be the most beautiful solders that you're going to see on instagram we're just getting this in we're going to make sure there's no leaks and then we're going to clean it off with a nice wet wag a wet wag once we're done oh yeah and you can buy these beasts on amazon it'll be damned hard for you to see but i have got it on now we'll have a proper looking effect but i've just got to get these on more than anything it's not an easy space to be working it's the only space I can do this in. So in goes the second one. Uh, as I was saying, you can buy these automatic air vents that I'm fitting here on our Amazon store. So check that out. I'll leave links to that below so you can get the exact same ones. These are probably, well, these Flamco and Altechnic make the two ones that I tend to use the most. Uh, so I'll list both of those there. Um, I'm using a little fluctuator as well, just in case you're interested in what I'm using to flux the pipe. And as you can see, we've got a horizontal run of pipe there with lots of bits of water coming out. Look, you can see it's starting to run again and I'm just getting rid of that water. Now we're really quickly going to get that soldered in before the water returns. Got a nice little set, so it sets past our pipe there. And look at that, getting that bit of soldering done. Just wanging in the solder. We don't want this to leak, do we guys? We don't want there to be any problems. So yeah, all good. Job's going very well. I'm happy. Hopefully this is gonna sort the problem out. And then in a few minutes time, once we've got it sorted out, I'll be able to show you some of my other little tricks as to how to do it. And look how awful that soldering is. <laughs> so we're looking good. There's one of our air vents up there already. We just gotta put this one on here, let this cool down and get that popped on. Boom. Gotta be a bit quiet now because Pilates is here in the hall. And they said, if I make too much noise, that made me that made me do hundreds. Right, so I've just cracked this open. Now we're gonna go upstairs and have a little listen. Well, I'm gonna drop a bit more in there, which means I'm gonna have to run about and I don't wanna be doing that on camera. Up the stairs, down the stairs, check the pressure. Up the stairs, down the stairs, check the pressure. Check your leaks, check the leaks. Make sure all is well. See you in a minute. Right, you gotta believe me. We filled up, they vented out. The two radiators that have been a problem for absolutely ages got hot and then the whole village had a power cut. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Right, it's the next day. I've kind of got to be quiet because my mother-in-law is currently doing piano lessons with a young child. Um, so, as you can see there, everything's working now. Everything's working perfectly fine. 
Um, so there's just a couple of other things I wanted to tell you before we finish that you could do. So if you do keep getting air in the system and then you find that you've had to do this fix um, and you find that maybe the boiler pressure keeps dropping or that, um, you know, why was there air in the system in the first place? How are we going to figure that out? A couple of things you can do to sort that out. Number one is you can turn the boiler temperature down a little bit. It could be the fact that you've got the boiler temperature turned up so high that it is effectively kettling the water and creating steam and then that goes up to a high place I mean really in all essence it should condense back down again but that's gone up into a high place and caused an airlock or it's been released by your air vents and therefore the pressure has dropped down again the other thing could be is the system is not properly inhibited which therefore means that um, we are creating the, the water is reacting with the inside of the radiators because we've drained out some water to do this job today we will be adding the inhibitor to this system just a couple of tubs it's no big deal um, so we'll be popping some of that in there probably over the next day or so I mean it's about seven o'clock at the moment in the evening so I'm not going to do it now um, the other thing we can do is turn the pump speed down so if you find that especially on a system like this where they've got like 20 radiators someone hires one room and then they set just one radiator to come on um, you'll find that the pump speed is too high and it's uh, I think it's called cavitation I can't remember you guys in the comments will let me know um, but that is something you're going to need to know as well if you find that you've got one radiator that is not working, you're going to want to watch this video here. That is going to be the one that sorts you out. I made it years ago when I was a fat little chublet. Okay, so watch that now. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. Hold tight. Ciao, Bella.